Good morning. Please join me in reading the words of praise from the Book of Common Prayer of the St. Giles Cathedral, Edinburgh, Scotland, circa 1637. They can be found in your bulletin or on your screen. O Lord our God, you are always more ready to bestow your good gifts upon us than we are to seek them. You are more willing to give than we desire or deserve. Help us so to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that the door of your mercy may be opened for us. In the name of Christ Jesus, our one and true hope. Please join me in our opening prayer from the Church of Scotland Book of Common Order, 1940. The words may be found in your bulletin or on your screen. Everlasting God in whom we live and move and have our blessing being, you have made for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Give us purity of heart and strength of purpose that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will. No weakness keep us from doing it, that in your light we may see light clearly, and in your service perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and in the Holy Spirit, one God and forever. Now may we open our hearts as we seek God's presence in silence. God's peace, us, God's peace strikes us with amazement, and yet at the same time dwells within us constantly. In faith, we embrace the paradox of living as children of God. We are made new each day and unceasingly loved. The peace of Christ be with you. Please greet those around you with the peace of Christ or by commenting on screen at this time. to God, glory to God, glory in the highest, glory to God, glory to God, alleluia, alleluia. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. Let us listen for God's holy word. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Well, who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus, who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Wean it from sin through all its pulses move. Stoop to my weakness, mighty as thou Ask no dream, no prophet ecstasies, no sudden rending of the veil of clay, no angel visitant, no opening sky. Thank you, Owen, for that beautiful music, for, for Bob on our organ this morning, for Anne as our liturgist, and for Jim and Pat uh, helping with the procession to help celebrate the Kirken this Sunday. This is a truly a team effort. We have Greg and Donna and Steve and Dan in the back with sound and video, so thank you all. And I just get to stand up here for a few minutes and preach, so that's not bad. All right. 
my family was able to get our DNA analyzed a few years back. It turns out that George, believe it or not, is 100% golden retriever. Maybe I first should have mentioned that he is a dog as well. Yes, his coloring is nearly white, but he is in fact a golden retriever. It's what some call an English cream, which by the way, originally was first bred in Scotland. Julie's family, the Sharps, tend to be predominantly from England and Ireland, although her family has been well immersed in the United States for generations. Most of her ancestry is from Arkansas. My DNA results reflected what I have generally been told by my parents and relatives over the years. My dad's side is predominantly of German ancestry, although officially different nationalities. And my mom's side is predominantly of the UK, where my Presbyterian roots lie. About 90% of my DNA is split evenly between each of these ethnic groups. I don't know too much about my family's ancestry. It was never brought up too much by either side of my parents' relatives, although I have always been fascinated with the idea of knowing more. I did find records of the Binder family in Cleveland, Ohio, around the turn of the 20th century. And I also found records of my mom's side in the same time, time period, the Dykes family, recorded as living in Pulaski County, Kentucky. Although I realize we're not as educated on Kentucky's counties like we now are for Pennsylvania or for Georgia. And eventually, they moved up to northern Ohio as well. And the more I have read about emigration of the Germanic and Scotch-Irish, the more I realize that my ancestral family members were experiencing similar trials and tribulations in their homelands. For the most part, many, many Europeans came over to the U.S. for similar reasons. There were issues with land ownership, unsuccessful professional opportunities in farming, political conflict, religious persecution, and general bleak prospects for improved living conditions in their native lands. Living here today in the beautiful Pacific Northwest with a job and a home and a United States that is no longer a new nation, I find it hard to put myself in the shoes of my ancestors. I wonder what challenges they encountered in their homelands. So formidable that they sought to relocate their families away from the comforts of what they knew as home rather than stay where they were. I wonder what challenges they met along the way in their journey to this new land. And I wonder what challenges they encountered coming here as immigrants, seeking to make a new home of their own for their families and loved ones. Many people today come to the U.S. for the same reason as my ancestors did over a hundred years ago. As well as I'm willing to bet that most of our ancestors, they have dreams of a better life. But as we also know and share, we realize today that the privileges that many of us live with, a home, a job, Financial security, the list goes on and on. These blessings do not come easy, nor should they be expected or assumed in this life. Our ancestors struggled daily to realize a vision they shared of a better tomorrow. Some of them realized that this vision would be, come to fruition in their lifetime, and still others did not. 
Today, many individuals and families still share such a vision for a better tomorrow for themselves and for their future generations. But the path is not always certain. The way is not always direct. The odds are not always in one's favor. Today, I'd like for us to reflect upon this journey of our ancestors that have gotten us to where we are today. I'd like for us to be mindful of the sacrifice needed to realize all that we enjoy in our lives here at Valley Community. And I'd also like for us to reflect on something that's not always told within our family stories. The role of faith in the midst of an envisioning a brighter future, both back in the time of our ancestors, as well as for us today. We pick up today in Paul's letter to the Romans. Again, the opening chapters leading up to chapter 8 seek to answer and make sense of a Christian's past relationship with God. And then chapter 8 brings us to a conversation on how we are to understand our current relationship with our Creator. The opening verses of chapter 8 have to do with theological topics of predestination and election. And now here in verse 31, Paul continues his thought process. So Paul asks the question, If we who are called by God as children are indeed God's own, then is there anything in the world that can divide us from our Creator? The short answer is nothing. Verse 31, what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not With him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. And who is to condemn? It's Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. And Paul builds upon his reasoning, this time inciting Christ's presence in the world for all sinners who repent to follow him. Paul also also acknowledges the very real suffering that such followers are experiencing, including Paul, who is aware that his life is daily made vulnerable by the challenge of his calling into the mission world. Verse 35 reads, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. The psalm reads, we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. And then Paul writes some of the most beautiful words that help to encapsulate one's experience of having Christ in their life. And we find that in verse 37. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul experiences God's grace-filled love in this way. Through the person of Jesus Christ, we are reminded and assured of God's promise never to leave us, no matter what may come our way. 
Some, such as scholar Paul Ochtemeyer, take this theme of election in Paul's words to go even further. Nothing can separate us from God's love and salvation. Not even our own broken, sinful selves. Today, as we celebrate our heritage, as we remember our ancestors who have come before us, we are reminded that life's journeys are rarely easy. In fact, usually the most important things in life are only achieved through sacrifice, hard work, and perseverance. Just ask those who have come before us. And we're also reminded today of the good news found in Paul's words of Scripture. Wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever we encounter in life's journeys, God's love and Jesus Christ will never leave us. And it's because of this love that we can walk in faith and hope of a better tomorrow. I wonder what our future generations will say about us. Those who have lived and served in the year 2020 with pandemics and natural disasters, social unrest and turbulent elections, just to name a few. Will they look back on all that has gone on and say that we as Valley Community navigated such life events with the same hope and faith as Paul's words from our reading today? It's amazing to think that perhaps these words of Paul are the same words our ancestors read hundreds and if not thousands of years ago as they encountered a most uncertain world. Today, as we celebrate the Kirken of the Tartans, we reflect on these words of assurance that emboldened the earliest followers of Christ, as well as those reformers of Scotland, to envision a faith with God's gracious love as its hallmark. Our ancestors of our Presbyterian faith tradition were inspired by these same words when they settled in this new land called the United States. And today, in the year 2020, we gather together, empowered by the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that empowered our ancestors, remembering with thankfulness the sacrifice of those who have gone on before us so that we can rest in the assurance of this good news today and to boldly envision a brighter future of tomorrow for future generations as we together recount Paul's words. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And for this, may all of God's children say, Amen. call your name will you go where you don't know and never be the same will you let my love be shown will you let my name 
name be known. Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see and if but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Throw my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echo true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I will go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you. Please join me in affirming our faith together and ch as children of God. We'll be using the affirmation of faith today from the Iona Abbey Worship Book. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Today, as we celebrate our shared heritage of culture, nation, and faith, we are reminded and made grateful for our larger citizenship in God's kingdom, for all those who have come before us, all those who have shaped us into who we are today. So, as we offer a prayer of blessing and thanksgiving for all that God has provided, as we ask blessings on the Tartans and our community in Christ Jesus. O oh Lord, bless the tartans we have presented today and bless the people of which they signify. May we strive to live up to the very highest ideals they represent. Bless us that we may be a blessing, O oh Lord. We thank you, God, for your word, which has ordained a rich heritage of faith and sacrifice from our ancestors, from Adam and Noah, from Ruth and Naomi, from Abraham and David, 
so onward to the incarnation of Jesus, to the establishment of his church, our brothers and sisters in Christ everywhere. Never let us forget that a heritage of faith is a joy to be shared. Bless us that we may be a blessing, O Lord. Thank you, O God, for the blessings of family, the warmth, comfort, and security of family love. Never let us forget that our family love is a gift to be shared with kin and stranger. Bless us that we may be a blessing, O Lord. We praise you, O God, for those who have lived and died in Christ, that we might have the freedom to dwell in a community of faith. Never let us forget the sacrifices made for us as we envision the future together. Bless us that we may be a blessing, O Lord. On behalf of all families and nations, we stand before God in gratitude for our heritage, and we pray God's blessings on all beloved children in all lands. We proclaim that we are united in the covenant of Jesus the Christ, for there is but one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. Amen. Friends, last Sunday I announced that some of us, most of us should have received by now our annual pledge cards to officially open our stewardship season here with Valley Community. And Next Sunday, the 15th, we will celebrate our Commitment Sunday. It's a a Sunday where we have the opportunity to make our financial pledges for the church community for the coming year as we celebrate what has brought us to this point, as we celebrate how we continue to live into Christ's call today, and as we envision a brighter future for both Valley Community and for Christ's kingdom. And so for these next few Sundays, we'll have a moment during the service to continue that celebration as we hear from church members, family, and friends on how God continues to call them both to support Valley Community financially, but also how God calls them in their lives of service as Christ's hands and feet. And so this morning, we have the privilege of watching a short video from the Martin family Uh, from many faces you'll be familiar with as they share with us how God continues to bless them and how they continue to bless this community through their support. Hello, we're the Martins. I'm Sarah. And I'm Evan. And you might hear from Clara and Henry a little bit later on. Well, we're here to share a little bit about why we give to Valley. Uh, When Pastor Jeff reached out to us about doing a stewardship message, my first reaction was, I don't know if we have anything new, novel, or interesting to share. Nothing of note. And then I thought, and I realized, sometimes we don't have anything really special to offer, but the most important thing to do is show up. So here we are, we're sharing with you why we give to Valley. So we were talking and thinking and we realized, you know, there are lots of ways that we can give back to Valley community. Uh, We can give of our time and our talents. You fixing it? Yeah, good job. Hallelujah. 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 And we can also give of our treasures. And we give financially to Valley for several reasons. Evan, do you want to share a little bit about why? Yeah, there are a lot of different reasons that we support Valley financially, but some of the big issues or big reasons that we would are we feel called to give as Christians. Um, We give to Valley specifically because it's our community and our home, and we feel that Valley has invested so deeply in us and in our family, and this is a way for us to invest back in a group, in a community, in a church that has invested in us. Um, We're also very proud of the ways that Valley is invested and involved in our neighborhood and in our community in a lot of different places that we can't directly be involved ourselves. And by supporting Valley financially, we're able to indirectly support those endeavors. And it's something that um, we feel very proud of doing. 
We're really happy to be part of Valley Community. We miss seeing you all and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. Friends, I hope you enjoyed that moment with the Martin family. Again, our Pledge Commitment Sunday is next Sunday the 15th. If you'd like to mail in your pledge, you can do so uh, by sending that to the church office. There's also an online pledge form if you prefer to do it digitally, and you can find that on our church page. And you can also drop off your pledge card next Sunday following worship. Uh, we'll have someone outdoor, outside receiving those pledge cards if you'd like to show up. Uh, I believe the hours will be from 11 to 1 or 2 o'clock uh, next Sunday as well. So thank you in advance for your continued generosity. Now we come to the time in our regular Sunday worship where we respond to God's word in our life through our time, our talents, and our treasures. And so you can do so again digitally and electronically if you prefer by going to valleycommunity.org. There you'll find a couple of different options for giving, and you can do so um, by clicking on those particular links. You can also conti continue to mail in your regular offering to the church office, where it'll be processed as it is received. You can also drop it off in person at any point during our regular church office hours, which are currently Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now, friends, let us receive this morning's offering with joy as we are thankful of those who have come before us, those who are with us currently, and the vision that God bestows upon us for the future. Let's pray together. Most holy and loving God, today on this day as we celebrate the Kirken of the Tartans, we are most thankful. We remember those who have come before us, those who have sacrificed, those who have journeyed to unknown lands and uncertain futures. And have done so in the assurance of your words of hope and faith. Recognizing that you will never leave us, Lord. And so as we celebrate our heritage, as we celebrate those who have come before us, 
we are thankful for the opportunity to respond to your words of life today, even in these uncertain times. And so we ask that these offerings be blessed and may be exponentially realized here on this earth as well as in your kingdom so that we may continue this journey in faith together as we pick up where our ancestors have left off and as we create the way for future generations. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My heart will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Friends, we thank you once again for joining us for worship this morning through the wonders of technology. You're invited back next Sunday, every Sunday in fact, at 10 a.m. Pacific time here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, where we will continue to offer our live stream option for worship, even when the time does come when we are able to offer uh, in-person worship, we'll, we'll continue to make this a priority so that all may be able to continue to join us through the power of the Holy Spirit. You're also invited for our virtual coffee hour, which will begin in just a few moments, and that's on Zoom, and so you can find that by clicking on the Zoom link 
uh, which will be provided in the comments section as well as in our regular e-blast announcements. Um, also, I just want to highlight uh, a personal offering for those of you who are interested in small group opportunities via Zoom. Uh, we offer on s Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, a new book study on the book of Job, as well as an opportunity for us uh, as friends and members of Valley Community to share our experiences of the holiday season together uh, as we embark during these uncertain times. So again, that's Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. You can find that information in the e-blast and the newsletter as well. Now, friends, please join me in the final charge and benediction is found on your screens or in your bulletins. These words from Iona Abbey Worship Book. May God, who is present in sunrise and nightfall and in the crossing of the sea, guide your feet as you go. May God, who is with us when we sit and when we stand, encompass us with love and lead us by the hand. May God, who knows your path and the places where you rest, be with you in your waiting, be your good news for sharing, and lead you in the way that is everlasting. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.